Hey guys, this is Rich. Welcome back to the special edition of A Diver's Life on Conserving Bonaire Sea Turtles. This is one of our favorite uh, uh, filming experiences today. We're going out to Lac Bay and we're going to witness sea turtle conservation, Bonaire, and their volunteers do in-water surveys of these amazing green turtles uh, in Lac Bay. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go meet with the manager of sea turtle conservation, Bonaire, named Kai Schutt. And Kai is going to talk to us about all the work that they're doing. They're going to share with us how you can actually get involved as a volunteer uh, and how you can contribute and donate. You'll learn about how their work, ex their ex work expands beyond just the island of Bonaire. It goes throughout the Caribbean. They get involved with other like organizations to help these sea turtles. The other thing you're going to learn, uh, which is a little bit on the sad side, is the main reason for these sea turtles being endangered is because of us, humans, and, and how we might go about actually addressing these issues together. So hopefully this is a call for us to act. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take you out to Bonaire's wild east coast and we're going to do a shore dive at the southern end of Turtle City. Uh, so that we can get in there and experience these sea turtles in the wild without a lot of other people. And it's going to be absolutely beautiful. We take our big camera and we're going to have just a lot of fun. So with that, let's go turtling. I think that's a word, turtling, yeah. <laughs> This is the story of two divers who left the corporate world and moved to Bonaire to live a diver's life by the sea. Many only dream about this life. Our hope is to inspire you through our experiences and stories so that you can live the dream too. This is a diver's life. The water and sky, reflection in my eye, and it's true. So true that my life, that my life is a she shine, is a she shine, is a she shine, is a she shine. Is a June at Bonaire's Lac Bay. Lac Bay is the most important foraging area for green turtles which eat seagrass. We don't see many hawksbills in Lac. They feed on sponges. Both juveniles and subadults permanently feed here on the abundant seagrass in the protected bay. A sea turtle conservation boat comes in. Here they acquire critical data on these turtles. The turtles are netted and brought in to measure growth rate, age, check for the presence of diseases, as well as human or naturally induced injuries. DNA samples are taken to gain better insight into the distribution and composition of sea turtle populations. Turtle heads and carapaces are covered in damp towels to reduce stress and keep them cool during data collection and inspection. Volunteers are critical. Amy, a new volunteer, holds a green turtle while it is being measured. The turtle is inspected for markings, disease, and injuries. What's that, white gum? That's just... Excrete the salt through oh. in the eyes. Right. Uh -huh. 50 on the Green turtles in Lac Bay grow an average of 5.65 centimeters per year compared to 2.44 centimeters on the west coast. Oh, yeah. Smaller turtles are carefully oh. placed in bags to be weighed. You can bring this to the, to the top. The first turtle is released. Yeah. Embedded microchips are read to identify the turtle. Have a tag. And I don't think it's recent. So, so the last six numbers are two. With a gentle touch, Fernando shows how covering the eyes reduces stress. 
At release, some turtles can't wait to take off. <laughs> yeah, this one, well, <laughs> is just another day in paradise. <laughs> Statistical modeling shows that the green turtle numbers increased between 2003 and 2018 with 500 green turtles in 2018. Green sea turtles reach sexual maturity between the ages of 25 and 40 years, when their carapaces are 76 to 91 centimeters in length. In 2019, data was not recorded due to the health risk of sargassum coming into the bay. These volunteers give insight as the type of people that move to an island to live. You become part of a very small community of explorers who care for the environment and its marine life. You experience nature in a much more intimate way, unlike your local zoo or aquarium. Sea Turtle Conservation Bonaire, or STCB, and its volunteers work tirelessly to conserve Bonaire sea turtles and to see how we can do better to grow the population. Here they are out making a difference and sharing the experience with visitors in hopes they will give back too. What they receive in return is far greater than what they give. Green sea turtles reach sexual maturity between the ages of 25 and 40 years when their carapaces are 76 to 91 centimeters in length. 74.7 it's difficult to determine sea turtle sex until they reach maturity as they don't differ externally. After reaching sexual maturity, male sea turtles develop a long tail which houses the reproductive organs. Weighing this big green requires some ingenuity and some heavy dockers. It will take two people to put this one in the water. Let's meet with STCB's manager, Kai Schutt, to learn more about the organization and how you can help. Hi guys, this is Rich. I'm with the manager of Sea Turtle Conservation, Conservation Bonaire, Kai Shook, and we're going to ask a few questions. Um, so, well, first thing I'd like to say, uh, how much respect we have for your organization. You really are a uh, sense of pride for the people of Bonaire. One of the things that we've noticed is you've invested in a number of things in the last few years, and one of them is you've got that new boat which extends your, uh, your range uh, within on Bonaire. But one of the things that had you uh, added to extend your capabilities on the island? We have the Sundance, which was donated to us, which is our small boat that you went to Plan with. Yeah. And then we got Talassa, and Talassa is also a donation. So it's uh, a donation to our organization, for which we're very happy, um, because the Talassa enables us to do the work on the west coast, so when we're counting turtles, it's very easy to go from the south end to the north end, whereas with the Sundance it was always a bit tricky. Yeah. Um, and it also helps us with explorations of the east coast. So that's something that we want to do in the future, is look at the east coast and see how many turtles live in that area. Uh -huh. um, so as an organization, I think for us the most important aspect to continuously invest in is our volunteer database. Mm -hmm. We're a small organization, we only have a few staff. Um, so we really depend on our volunteers. Volunteer beachkeepers that patrol the beaches every single day during the nesting season. We have people helping us snorkeling, counting sea turtles on the west coast. We have people that help us in that bay when we go out there for our capture and our recapture research. Uh, people helping us with education presentations. So without those volunteers, our organization would not exist. So that's definitely the most important aspect to keep investing in. What are the greatest challenges that affect the growth of the sea turtle population? What can people do to help change and improve that uh, as well? Right, so sea turtles are a 
endangered or critically endangered. They're not doing too well. And that's mostly because of us, of people, um, the threats that we pose. Yeah. So climate change is one major aspect. Um, climate change affects the, the sex ratio of the sea turtles because the sex of a turtle is determined by the temperature of the sand during incubation, so in the, in the nest. Okay. If temperatures are warmer, we get more females. If it's cooler, we get more boys. So oh. we always say hot chicks and cool dudes, which is an easy <laughs> way to remember. So with temperatures rising, that's a, a major threat because the balance will, will be lost, right? We'll have more females, less males. For oh. some part, that's okay because a boy can impregnate more females. Yeah. But we do need a balance of some sort. Sure. So right now we're actually involved in temperature research. We've placed data loggers in the sand on our nesting areas. Um, mm -hmm. And we're looking at the data to see what the temperatures are doing up in there. That's a year-long study, so we'll have to wait for the data to be collected. Then we have fisheries bycatch, for example. Mm -hmm. They have those uh, shrimp trawlers, the big nets, turtles get stuck in those, the, the floating ghost nets that, that are around, um, turtles get stuck in buoys. And with turtles, they can stay underwater, but they do have lungs, so they need oxygen at some point. So when they get stuck on something under the water, they cannot breathe, they will drown. If they get stuck on something that's floating on top of the surface, like that, on the water, and they cannot go under, they'll starve because they won't be able to eat. Um, so it's a, a delicate balance. One of the threats that is related to pollution and that we see on Bonaire as well is a disease called fibrocapillomatosis. Yes, I remember that. We, uh, I actually volunteered on one of those sea turtle uh, surveys a few years ago. And I remember, I didn't see them this year. I didn't see some. We have some, yes. We do, yeah. Yeah, so every year it varies somewhere between 5 and 30% of the turtles that we capture in NAC. Yeah. We used to do the same capture mark recapture studies in Lagoon, yeah. uh, right next to the landfill. Okay. But we stopped doing that because it was too dangerous for our own health. Yeah. But the number of turtles that we found there with fibro, it's a tumor-like disease, um, was incredible. It's, really? Yeah, so I really think it's related to, to pollution. Yeah, the water quality over there is not the best. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it affects green turtles. Green turtles are the most important population in Lac Bay. It's a, a green turtle hotspot yes. because of all the seagrass. Yeah. So it's a shame when we see those turtles and we can't really do much about it. If the tumors are small, we can tie them off and that helps. But if they get bigger, we don't have a, a vet here that specializes in turtles or a sea turtle hospital like we have in the States. Mm -hmm. So we're, yeah, our options are limited. So those are some of the threats that we have. Um, luckily, sea turtles on Bonaire are protected and respected. Uh, by the people that visit our island, by the people that live here. So poaching, for example, is not such a big issue anymore on Bonaire. However, sea turtles migrate so in other places where they still yeah. have an uh, open season for catching turtles. And so, yeah. So one of the things we uh, haven't covered is the migratory uh, range of these sea turtles. And, right. and to do that, you work with other organizations outside of Bonaire. So can you talk about all of that effort? Yeah, so we've been placing satellite transmitters on adult sea turtles, yeah. mostly on female turtles because they come ashore to nest, and it's easier to intercept and put the transmitter on rather than being out on a boat and having to capture a, a large male. Mm -hmm. uh, very difficult. We deploy these satellite transmitters, and they tell us where the turtles that live on Bonaire, uh, sorry, that nest on Bonaire, where they live outside in the, in the wider Caribbean region. Mm -hmm. So these turtles that are born on Bonaire. They migrate through the Caribbean region, they live in different places, and they only come back to Bonaire to mate and to nest. Mm -hmm. So the turtles that were born here, if they are adults and they come back, and we put a transmitter on them, we can see where they live. Mm -hmm. So it could be that these turtles nest on Bonaire, but live in Nicaragua, live in Cuba, or closer, uh, like Venezuela. Mm -hmm. And that's a very important research because it tells us where our, thir where our turtles are a threat. Mm -hmm. So if turtles are protected on Bonaire, but they have to swim all the way to the yeah. it's they're going to have to cross different countries, different waters, mm -hmm. with different laws. So some places there's no protection laws and sea turtles can get caught legally. Mm -hmm. um, so it tells us where we have to focus our work on. 
And for that reason, we're all um, connected. All the organizations come together in a group called White Pants. White Cast? White Pants, yeah. Okay. It's a, a wider Caribbean um, cooperation between organizations, turtle mm -hmm. organizations. We meet once a year. We have contact almost every day where we share updates from our own work. We share research efforts that are going on, um, funding opportunities. So it's a really close group. We, we talk a lot, we share a lot in that way. We support each other um, because if STCB, for example, was only to focus on the protection of sea turtles on Bonaire, and that's not going to help us protect sea turtle populations in the wider Caribbean region. Right. Because as soon as they leave Bonaire, they're a threat, they're in danger. So we have to lobby different governments, we have to work together with different organizations um, to make sure that these turtles, which are endangered or critically endangered, that they have a chance to survive. So that kind of leads into the, the last question I have for you. How do people get involved and how best to do it? Right. Yeah. Well, if people are on Bonaire and they're living on Bonaire, they can become volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, they can help us out with cleanups. They can become beachkeepers, control mm -hmm. the beaches. They can help us in the water. Uh, but often people are only here for a limited time, right? Right. So one of the things they can do is come with us to climb Bonaire, like you did yourself, mm -hmm. for a nest monitoring patrol. And that's something that we do between May and November. Okay. And that's, uh, you get to see our work up close, learn more about the work that we do. Um, another thing that we do is presentations, public presentations, mm -hmm. twice a month. Yes. Every second and fourth Wednesday of the month at Yellow Submarine by Friends. Is that what we're doing now? Okay. Um, so people can come and uh, learn about the work, learn about sea turtles all over there, mm -hmm. ask any questions they may have, talk to our volunteers and staff. Um, so that's a good way to, to learn. And then for people to donate, we have different options. We have um, something called hatchling adoption. Mm -hmm. So people can donate and they will get a, a certificate. And it's a symbolic, uh, it's a, a donation. You're not yeah. going to get a, a hatchling, right? So, yeah. uh, but you're going to get a certificate and we can tell you more about the hatchlings that we have on board there. I remember one of the things that you had done in the past that you, you'd say, okay, you can also give so much money for how many hatchlings come up. And you had the largest nest ever. We had, <laughs> yes. we had, we had the jab pocket when we were that drawing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah so we do that. We do uh, nest adoptions. Yeah. So people or companies can, uh, can sponsor a, an actual nest. So there's different ways to, to support our work. We have our merchandise. Um, and one thing I think that's very important is we're a small organization. We really depend on donations, on merchandise sales. So all of the money that is given to us goes straight to the turtles. Mm -hmm. It goes directly to the work that we do. Uh, we're only two full-time staff, so it's a uh, so we're we're small. Uh, wow. Yeah, our volunteers are awesome. They help us out for free. They donate their time. Mm -hmm. We have vendors on the island that donate their space and their time to sell our sell our merchandise, um, just to support the work that we do. Okay, well, thank you very much for your thank time you. and the work you do. And I guess what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be heading out to the East Coast to see some of these big turtles, uh, sea turtles in the wild. So it'll be a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rich. Thank All you right. for this All right, thanks. Bonaire's wild east coast, south of the old shrimp farm. This small channel leads out to the wall at the southern end of Turtle City. The bottom of the channel is lined with razor-sharp hard corals which quickly shred your dive booties, and falling can be treacherous. This place is normally exposed to high waves that hit the coast. A strong current can quickly get you into trouble. Dive boats don't typically come here, so the turtles are less stressed. In the distance, you can just make out the light color of Lac Bay and the coral reef that protects it. That is where the local dive operators will take you. But not us. We need to film them in the wild without lots of humans. We'll take advantage of a drop in the wind and sacrifice some booties 
to see them up close. The road to Soroban is a desolate one that takes you out to Benares east coast south of Lac Bay. We take a right past the windmill and head south. We pass the old abandoned shrimp farm and take a left. We focus on getting past the wave break without falling. The turtles don't expect us. The channel opens up into a brilliant landscape of sea fans. Doreen signals the first turtle. The sea fans reflect the sun in a beautiful array of blues and bronzes. This one is a bit far away we need to get closer. Immediately you see the differences from the west coast. The bottom is lined with beautiful hard corals to stand up to the pounding waves and surge. The east coast reef seems to radiate sunlight like gemstones. Doreen glides above the beautiful coral field. The lighting is amazing. A school of yellow goatfish. Passing over this boulder star coral, we see another turtle in the distance. The numbers are picking up. A southern ray relaxes on the sand. I turn position for a shot. He doesn't wait for me. A beautiful star coral and of course some brown chromis. Staring at this coral head, I completely miss a big green turtle resting underneath a schoolmaster and a juvenile striped parafish. The angle of the sun is perfect. Even a little color goes a long way. I spot another southern ray when Doreen signals she's found something. It's the big green I missed. It couldn't care less that we were there. It was nap time. Even the two large lionfish swimming above don't phase this turtle. Doreen spots another turtle. It's a green turtle. And this green is just chilling. I stayed a bit longer for this beauty and it swims off. Another turtle swims out in the blue. I'm not going to catch this one. A large lionfish. Another green turtle. I better hide behind this gorgonian. I peer over the side and the turtle spots me. This turtle had a deformed right rear flipper. It doesn't seem to slow her down. Doreen shares a moment with this amazing animal. The sun is starting to set and we head in. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and hit the subscribe button and the bell. It goes a long way to supporting this channel and helps you to know when new content is released. Thank you for watching.